mihi atu ki a koutou e ngā whānau um, o te rohe o wairarapa mihi atu ki a koutou. I have um, today happy one because the Black Caps won <laughs> against Bangladesh and hopefully <laughs> Kane, <laughs> Kane Williams uh, is okay for the next game. I'm hoping um, because he's an integral part of that that mechanism of being the Black Caps. But also... Um, to the All Blacks, congratulations for your win and commiserations to the world number one team at that uh, yesterday anyway. Um, Ireland, they played awesome. It was an awesome game to view. And um, the reason why I'm congratulating of the All Blacks is historically when the All Blacks um, are defeated, then the mood in the country diminishes. There's a lot of depression around, and sometimes with that depression, um, it has been known that um, families, it gets taken out on the families. So at least I know that this week, okay, it will be okay for some families out there. Yeah, We have some guests in the, the studios, as always. I'll let them introduce um, themselves to you and the organisation that they represent. Kia ora, a Yep. Kia ora. Uh, Warren from um, Yellowbrook Road. Oh, Warren from Yellowbrook Road. Uh, yeah, Warren, please, Kia ora, Warren. <laughs> Kia ora. Morena. Uh, my name is Tan from Yellowbrook Road, otherwise known as Te Wa Wa Waka Puahuahu. It's a it's a nice name, and I know that it was um, gifted by uh, my cousin, my fanonga. Uh, Mikairi uh, Kawana, yeah, yes. the story behind it, I'm not too sure, no. but I'm, I'm, I believe that there's a, a video out about um, how he came about that name. So if you're interested, would it be on uh, Yellow Brick Road's website? Yes, I think so, it is, mm. yes. So if you're interested in how that name came about and the significance of that name, um, please go to uh, yellowbrickroad.org. Yep. You'll, it'll come up if you just Google Yellow Brick Road Masterton, you'll get the right website. Yeah, yeah. great. great. And of course, last but not least, <laughs> <laughs> my co-host for the show, uh, Aging with Attitude, Susie. Uh, kia ora koutou. Um, yes, I am also very excited that the All Blacks won. I've never been so excited about a game, I don't know why. I guess it's because we had different um, results from another interesting weekend's elections. But um, yeah, I cried. I was in the game at the end. You know that last um, last minute when they were doing all those tackles and there was only a few points difference, and I was like, oh no, we were up. And then I even hugged my husband, which we don't do very often. So <laughs> that was so exciting. <laughs> Uh, maybe a little black should play off more often <laughs> next week. Sean, you're right, mate. <laughs> All right. And so um, today, as you would know with my guests, we're going to be talking about um, some of the contracts or the programs that are run by uh, Yellow Brick Road. So I'll just open it up and ask, uh, oh, I forgot <coughs> to congratulate um, National on winning the election. Well, yeah, we'll find out after the and Second, special votes. Yeah, November. Mm. It's a wee way away. It's a couple of weeks ago. Yes, it is. Mm. Um, and then, but also to Kieran, uh, my yeah. commiserations to you, um, Kieran. I thought you did an awesome job for the Wairarapa, and especially with um, being on the response team for Cyclone um, Gabriel. I think you did an awesome job there um, for the Hawke's Bay, Wairua, Wait, um, and Wairarapa also. So, yeah, get to me, um, Kieran. So, Yellow Brick Road. Yes, okay. Yellow Brick Road. Tan, what do you do there? <laughs> I'm a family whānau support worker. Along. What does that mean? That means um, we support people who have someone in their family who is struggling with mental health oh. issues, either diagnosed or undiagnosed, but struggling in some way or another. And their main support is often the mother, sometimes the father. It could be um, a sibling that's affected by someone in the family too. Um, yeah, we support the family, so that's how that's how Yellowbrook Road came about, or Supporting Families New Zealand, which is the official name. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, Yellowbrook Road is a a, um, a, a, a gathering of um, some of the branches, probably the majority of the branches, um, to pull resources and um, give a consistent service. Mm -hmm. So. Um, so you basically streamlined it. Yeah. 
yeah. basically. Yeah. So what does, why Yellow Brick Road? Is it to do with um, the You're Wizard of Oz? You're difficult <laughs> questions that I don't know the answer to. <laughs> I, was just, I, was, I was just wondering, looking, I wonder what this is for. You know, yeah. Why do they call it Yellow Brick Road? Yeah, um, yeah. I don't know. There, I think it is also on the website, but that, that's the other the little bits of things that I haven't um, stored in my memory okay. of why um, I just know what we do and how we do it. Yeah. <laughs> well, do you maybe, have any maybe, insight okay. into that? No. Okay. Because oh, I could see, who was that, that actress? Uh, Judy Garland. Julie, Judy Garland. I could see her skipping along now, you know? Yeah, the Yellow but, Brick yeah. Road. The Yellow Brick but Road. But she also gathered people, like the Tin Soldier, the Lion and the... Yeah. You know, to along the road people on a journey. People seeking yeah, something so maybe yeah, together. Yeah. Good, so, yeah. good call, I, Susie. Something along so, those lines. Getting some lines. heart. Um, what was the other one? Courage. Courage and... Brains. Brains, yeah. yeah. Well, wow. yeah. that sounds... And to get home. <laughs> and to get and home. To get home. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and all the obstacles that they faced. <laughs> yes. And how they overcame those difficulties. Yeah, together. Or those challenges together. Okay, mm. we worked it out, did we? Yeah. That was pretty <laughs> good, wasn't <laughs> it? <laughs> Collaboration already. <laughs> yeah, well, looking at it from that perspective, you know, that's, as you said, um, working it out together. And really, that's what you do. It, it is. By, by what you're just saying then, yeah. working it out together. Yeah. And even though they might have the Wicked Witch of the North or wherever it is from, you know, <laughs> all those witch. barriers, all those obstacles, mm. you know, there's a way to overcome those challenges. Yeah. yeah. That's what it seems like to, yeah. to me. Thank you, Susie. Yeah, good on. For that inspiration. <laughs> that, but Monday inside. morning on, on all that. What, like, are you <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Warren? What do you do at Yellow Brick Road? Um, I do the same as time. Yeah, we do the same work. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, talk to me a little bit about the things that you do in terms of uh, having a, a person who's experiencing um, mental health issues. We we work with the the family rather than the person, the tangata yep. whaiwara. So we're working with the family around. So what? I've learned. Actually, previously we've both been mental health support workers in the past. Okay. And working with Tangata Whaiora was our, our skill as well. Mm -hmm. So we have a good understanding of different um, mental health issues and how they um, manifest and how they impact mm -hmm. on families. So now we've done a, a, a shift to supporting the family members. and But with both, um, as a support person, the main... The thing that helps the most is being quiet and listening, mm. actively listening and not judging. Okay. I'm going to ask, I suppose it could be termed a, another challenging question. <laughs> 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 but because of your experience, you'll be fine in answering it. Okay. Because you, you talked about actively listening. You know, what does that look like to be an active listener? Really paying attention really listening so you can um, understand what's affecting the person, not just seeming like you're listening, really listening. Okay, so in t say if I was the... the Person? Receiving yeah, support. yeah, the, the, and the whanau that you're supporting. How would I know that you're listening, um, that you're listening to what I'm saying to you? But what, what, what were some of the things that you do to, ins to ensure me that... Actually, okay. I'm hearing what you're saying. Yeah. Because that's important too to, yes. for the other person to realise, yep. hey, they actually listen to me. So what are some of the things or techniques that you use um, so that you can say to the um, the tongue of the fire order or the fire member so that they know that Mirroring. I'm being heard? Mirroring oh. is one. Okay. Tone is another. Mm. And repeating back what the person says. What do you mean by mirroring? Mirroring yeah. is like um, leaning forward. If you're leaning forward, you're, uh -huh. you you don't even do it consciously. Quite often, people do it unconsciously. Okay. And and it shows that you are there with the person. If they're leaning forward, if they've got their hands like you've got yours, and yeah. I'm doing the same thing, mm -hmm. you might won't even register it necessarily consciously, but it will register with you that okay. I'm paying attention. close attention to you. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. And you were talking about um, minimal encouragers? Um, 
you know, repeating back or, uh, yeah, just, just, or paraphrasing? Um, or, yeah, paraphrasing <coughs> or repeating back. So you're making sure that you are clearly understanding what the person is saying. Yeah, and that's it's another awesome. way of showing that you are listening properly. Yeah, and I, I guess it, in terms of that, it also comes to the point where um, you could, the person who's uh, having the conversation with you, can clarify things because you might repeat something back. Actually, I didn't mean that. Or, yes, exactly. Yeah, or what did you mean? Yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. That's some yeah. of the things. Yeah. Wow. What about for you, Warren? Are your um, are your cues similar um, to Tan? I, yeah, very much so. Okay. Um, uh, I certainly um, in this line of work. Yeah, it is about active listening, and sometimes, you know, actually, that's what people need. You know, I've had um, I've had initial meetings where people have come through, and you know, all they've needed is just a bit of a talk, and you know, just to vent and mm. you know, um, say what's on your mind, and and sometimes that, that's enough. Yeah, just somewhere that someone could just let go of their thoughts and know that they're in a safe space, I suppose. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, some good skills there. Mm. I remember, I'm reminded of the song. Um, I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> no. You make it. <laughs> uh, Whitney Houston, I think it was Whitney, no, it wasn't Whitney Houston, it was Beyonce. Uh, she was in a film uh, called The Dream Girls. And one of the songs that she sung, because her husband was being really unkind to her, and the song is called Listen to the Song Within My Heart, a melody that I can't keep in. And he was going all over the place doing what he wanted to do, um, but he thought he was sitting with her knowing what she was wanting, but really it was all what he was wanting. And she was saying to him, if you listen to my heart, if you take time and just stop and listen, really listen, you know what I want to do. Mm. Mm. So that's what it reminded me of that song, reminded me of what you were saying, mm. you know, mm. someone to sit down and listen. Yeah. Yeah. So th th that's like the key, probably the, the most important thing and what people seem to need the most, but there's other practical things we can help um, advocate if they need advocate advocation with clinical services if they're not feeling listened to. Oh, good. Um, also referring them to other services that they may need or or suggesting other services that their their family member may need. Okay. What like would that. some of those services be? Just off the top of Pathways, your head. Pathways. Pathways. Emerge. Um, yeah. Te ho ora, mm. um, Changeability. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you said you advocate also if they need some um, clinical, or I suppose understanding too, because sometimes if you're talking to, well, I'm just going off the top of my head, if you're um, talking to, say, a doctor, you may not understand fully hmm. because my head's <coughs> in a different place. So do yes, you... we can do. We can support people to those sort of appointments. Yeah, yeah, with doctors or with. Um, um, adult mental health services. Yeah. If someone feels they didn't get the service they were wanting or expecting, they're really good there. They'll they'll happily come and meet, and we can help advocate for that person and help the understanding between between the person and the service. Yeah, because from my perspective, anyway, um, when you if I understand something, then. Um, that's half the battle won. Mm. And then that's just for me. If I understand, if I don't understand, then I get koretake. And mm. What the heck's going on here? What are you talking about? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then my mind goes. Yeah. And most of us don't remember, like, those appointments. <coughs> mm. If we go to a GP and, and then come out and go, um, what did what they, they say? say? Yeah. <laughs> it's quite yeah. interesting, eh? Because I know that when we have people that are going to a meeting like that, um, I quite often suggest them to write things down because mm. when you get in there you go blank you I mean do. I go blank yes and that's something that I, that helps me with stuff um, so go in with a list it, it keeps the um, person that you're visiting a bit more sharp as well because they know that you are documenting mm. your interview or your appointment yeah. um, that's and good advice. Having, yeah it's just um, magic really um, I remember going to um, someone's appointment um, they took the person in early and so I was like, oh, where are they in the reception room? They said, oh, they've already gone through. So I rushed in and um, 
the specialist actually, you know, I worked in the hospital years ago and must have recognised me. And um, after her appointment, she said, "Oh my goodness, Susan, I've never had things explained to me like he did that day." And I've, you know, my um, X-ray explained and things mm. like that. So it's just really amazing what you know extra ears do and mm. eyes yeah. as well. Yeah. Uh, and then the she, and it's quite empowering for people. Yes. You know, which was it was just something really simple that worked so well. <laughs> uh, I think also what you're saying to that, Susie, is that I might go in with a list, but it could be an idea to write down the feedback. Mm. Mm. So that when I go outside, I go, what did he say again? Oh, he said this. Mm. What do I have to do? Or if a family member asks you, what happened at the doctor's today? Mm. Oh, well. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then it's easier to feed back to the whanau, especially if you want um, about support around that. So it works both ways, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any other strategies that you use in terms of um, advocating for people? can't think of anything right now. Okay, that's okay. One thing I didn't ask is, if I wanted to get in contact with you on from Yellow Brick Road, how do I do that? Um, <laughs> yeah, there's the website. Okay. Um, but mostly we've, we've been dropping our pamphlets. I've brought some here just in case to give you one. <laughs> um, all around town. And we go to, usually go to the collective karakia on a Wednesday morning where other services come. Um, and we, we try and spread the news. So people can actually just walk in off the street if they know where we are. Um, our phone number, our office phone number comes straight through to us. And our, um, our, our referral forms we've spread to every service that we use. Um, and they're on your website too, because they're yeah. quick. Yes. Quick. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. And on the website. So there's multiple ways for, for and, you know, often it's just word of mouth too and people mm. do just walk in or someone gives them the number and they just ring up. Okay, so I'm going to go back to spaces first, okay? So where is your office? 323 Queen Street. Okay, that was easy. 323 Queen Street. And phone number? Mm. <laughs> I have to look it up. I don't know the phone number. That's okay. <laughs> what's, the, website. what's the website address? Oh, dub, 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 I think you dub, can dub, just dub, Google. Yeah, Yellow, Yellow Road. 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 Mr. Mrs. Google is very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Fano, uh, if you need the support, you can rock on up to 323 Queen Street. Yeah. Yep, so self referrals. Yes, oh, yep. they can come from other organisations or just self refer. Yep. What, are, what are your hours? Um, Monday to Friday, 9 to 4. I, I've listed all, just in case you don't ask me, um, all the other services that we have there as well as the Family Whanau Support. Uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about those okay. shortly. Okay, <laughs> we'll get your one done first. <laughs> and, and then we'll move on to the other services because the, um, I know that they're very, very um, useful in the community. But we'll go there later. Okay. okay? Yeah, yeah. So um, in terms of we've got the time. We've got the venue, the place. We know that you can go in if you want whānau, if you want to go in, self-refer, great. If you want, if you're a whānau member and you want support, 323 Queen Street. Just rock on up and ask for Warren or Tan or anyone, mm. I presume, mm. at um, Yellow Brick Road and they will put you into the uh, right space. Yeah. Any door is the right door. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah. yeah. And there are referrals from other agencies. So agencies like Yellow Brick Road. No, you are Yellow Brick Road. Yeah. Um, Pathways, yeah. the whole water, changeability. Yeah. Anywhere. Yeah. Doctors, yeah. hospitals. Yeah. They can all refer. Just send a referral through. Yeah. So I suppose that, um, what, do you, what is the biggest challenge out there, do you think, um, for whanos facing with mental health um, difficulties. What what do you think is the um, most challenging or the most prominent um, type of diagnosis? Um, well, yeah. What I are you mean, saying? Paranoid schizophrenia and um, and bipolar are, are prominent 
diagnoses, but um, I think the biggest challenge at the moment in the Wairapa is yeah. getting a diagnosis anyway, okay. um, because there's a lack of psychiatrists, and then getting help, so there's a lack of psychologists and counsellors. Mm -hmm. It's okay. um, But it's not just the Wairapa, I think that's nationwide, na nationwide mm -hmm. but yeah. um, that is slowing everything down um, for people getting help for their family member, for their, yeah. Yeah, I liked what you said in the beginning where you said you don't need a diagnosis to come in. No. Yeah, and it could be one of the barriers um, that might be out there in terms of I can't go and see them because they are mental health support, mm. but they don't have a diagnosis. And so it doesn't matter. No, we can still help. Yeah. Yeah. And I suppose even if you, it is that you don't have a diagnosis to go and talk anyway because at the end of the day we all get depressed <coughs> doesn't mean to say we're clinically depressed mm. we all suffer anxiety at different times doesn't mean to say we have a diagnosis no. of anxiety it just means that at that particular time I was feeling anxious and if you need support these fellas here can help you sort of <laughs> well, they'll put you in the so right. more, fo more, more, more focused on the, fa on the, the family, family. Yep. around. So, like, or you can put them in the right be, direction. It might be if you're feeling you're having a um, not clinically depressed, but yeah, depression and anxiety because mm. of environmental reasons, your wife might be struggling to support you. Mm. She would be the one more that we would help. Yeah. Because she yeah. would help her to help you. So we Great. support the supporters, yeah, if yeah. you know what I mean. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. A, that's a core um, but business in a way. But if, if Tangata Whaiora come to us too, we don't say, go away. We say, yeah. come in. Yeah, yeah. And we help them. And we, we have capacity to um, take them on and navigate them to where they need to go. Yeah. And like Warren says, it, sometimes it's just someone coming in stressed and just needing to talk to someone, yeah. and that's enough. So, yeah. Because does mental health actually have um, support for Fano as well, or they off? Well, they'll refer to us. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's mm. where, where quite a few of our referrals mm. will come from, like like pathways. Yeah. Because mm. they'll be supporting the Tangata Whara and they'll realise they'll also be working a little bit with the family and realise the family could do with more support, and they'll send them to us. Mm. I, I, hearing what you said, I feel a little bit sad for you. Now, this is the reason why. Okay, there's adult mental health services, there's um, cams, there is pathways, and there's just you two. <laughs> In terms of the amount of um, work that is yes. out there. If you have talked just at those three organisations, if I just took, um, say, three from each of those services, that's nine mm. people. Mm. Okay, but that's about nine, four, 36 whānau members, say, mm. Mm. that just the two of you mm. yeah. have to work with. So what do you do then? Because if I, just because of those figures, how do you keep your ones, your ones safe? What do you do um, in terms of self-care? Um, well, I guess we do a bit of you know, uh, peer support. Mm. Great. Um, that would be one of our, our biggest things, and we always talk about you know, how things are going on, uh, how things are with us, and also you know, some of the people that we actually work with. Yeah, yeah. How we're managing, yeah. We play games. <coughs> oh, what kind of games do you play? <laughs> Warren. Warren's a games master. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> For relief. Yeah, yeah. What is that game? Tung, tung, tung. Some of these are actually, you know, like kids' games. Is it the Kaplan? It's an electronic game. Okay. Where these uh, fish come up and you have a little fishing Oh, fishing hook. Yeah, right. Yeah. I got that just... Just for a bit of fun at the office, and actually, it uh, goes there really well. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll bring it up next time. Uh, yeah, yeah, we yeah. have a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty good at the game. I've got one of them at home. Yeah. Yeah. My grandchildren usually beat me, though, but hey. <laughs> it's quite funny, because back in the day, you used to get the fish game where they, it was 
you know, in a in a little pool when you had you actually literally had the fishing line. Yes. Like magnets. I remember giving the kids something something like that for Christmas time, which mm. was good fun. It's a good mm. way to get your mind off yeah. things, eh? And and yeah. Um, yeah, because I think if you hold on to too much, it's... And go, going for a walk, mm. if it's a nice day, if it's not raining and windy, yeah. which it doesn't seem to be so much uh, in Masterton, it's pretty good in well, Masterton, the weather. Yeah, we go out for a walk, yeah. As a, as a group, um, or is it just you and Warren? Yeah, even? just me and Warren, or sometimes okay. um, Lil, yeah. 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 Yeah, because uh, as I said, as I said, I felt sad for you because there's just two of you mm. in this position. Um, supporting family, yeah, yeah. Do you find do you find that you've got a lot more than when you first started in the role? A lot more people coming in for yes. support. Yes. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Is it overwhelmingly large? Or no, not, no, no, and no. not compared to other branches. Okay. Yeah. It's quite low. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'm not sure why, but no, it's it's lower it's than other areas. Yeah. But we are smaller than the other mm. areas as well. The mm. other areas are Auckland and yeah. Christchurch and. Yeah, Nelson. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Warren, you were going to say something. Our referrals do uh, fluctuate. Sometimes yep. we get a whole bunch coming in, and yep. sometimes it's just a bit of a low, and we just have to, you know, we just have you know, our people that we're working with at the time, and mm. then all of a sudden another influx of referrals. And, yeah, yep. and okay. Mm. Do you find it um, different seasons bring different people? Like, for instance, in the winter time, do you find more people are being depressed than you might in the summertime? I I think that is normally the case. I don't think any of us have been at Yellowbrick Road long enough okay. to know, or in Masterton long enough to know mm. the patterns here. Mm. Yeah. It's quite interesting how they have that sad, which is seasonal. Mm. Mm. Um, is it not? Yeah. Not getting enough vitamin yeah. D. And <clears throat> being mm. inside and so I've been there the longest, uh, me and Edith, and not, but that's only a year and a half. Mm. Oh, really? <laughs> so, um, oh. Okay. yeah, so it's quite a new team down at that yeah. office. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, since you talked about the team and Edith, what does Edith do? Ah, Edith is like a treasure. Edith, yep. um, she works 20 hours for... Um, Yellow Brick Road, and she does amazing. She runs a um, Happy Mama group, support What's that? group. That's for, um, I, wrote, I wrote it down so I would get it right. Happy Mama support group based around Māori traditional birthing practice wow. for the first thousand days. Um, yeah, so, yeah, and that's oh. been very popular and very, um, yeah, fantastic. So, three for years, mothers. basically. Huh? Three years. Three years. A thousand days. Oh, it's that, basically three days. Well, three I didn't do the math. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and she's just starting a new program, a parent, su uh, uh, a parent support group, a pilot group. Um, that's uh, it's about to start using tradition and connection to build everlasting memories. Um, so I'm, I don't think that's quite started yet. But she's also one of the facilitators of the WAVES program. WAVES? WAVES is an eight-week grief education program okay. mm. for 18 years and over who have been bereaved by suicide. Okay. Um, so that is about halfway through at the moment. Um, and that's that's run, facilitated by Edith. She's, I think, the lead facilitator, but she also has uh, our colleague Lil and uh, Leah Hemi is okay. also involved yep. in the in the WAVES. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll be interesting um, in terms of Edith, because I know Edith is a, is a weaver. Yes. Yeah, I know that she weaves stuff. Yes. And so um, it'd be interesting to have a corridor around um, using weaving as a vehicle for wellness. Yes. Yeah, how to rārango, intertwine. Yes. Um, and how to gather, I suppose, in terms of... Um, a Māori paradigm. Edith yeah. will talk amazingly yeah. on all of this. She's, you've probably had her, have you interviewed her before? No, no. I, I think you could do a whole program easily yeah. with Edith. <laughs> yeah, no, I didn't really know what work Edith did yeah. until you just mentioned That's it. That's so. just some of what she does. She does a lot of other things with um, REAP. Um, she does a Te Reo course. 
um, at our at Yellowbrook Road. Oh, great! Yeah. So at Yellowbrook Road, you've got um, um, talk, uh, whānau support, okay, for uh, Pākehā and adults and Rangatahi. Um, yes, well, we, part part of that support is um, we have two programs, a Kumi program and a Rangatahi program. So if there are children 6 to 12 who oh. need help understanding, say, their mother's got bipolar mm. or got <clears throat> clinical depression or something, um, we can do a program with them. And we also have a um, the 12 to 18 Okay. Um, teenage program, which same same thing. You know, it depends if they might have a sibling, they might have a parent. Yeah. So to help them understand that it's it's not their fault, mm. and you know what they can do to look after themselves and keep themselves well. What are some of the strategies? I'm interested in the Rangatahi program mm -hmm. um, at the moment. What are some of the strategies that you talk to uh, the Rangatahi about to how to keep themselves safe? Um, making sure they um, know they have places to go to and people to go to. So oh, who good. are the people in their lives already? So mm. all that, helping them identify their natural supports yep. and understand that they have people. They usually do have people in their lives already that they can mm. talk to. Yeah. Um, and they school, could be anyone. Yeah. Teacher. It could be through school. It could yeah. be friends. It could be other family members. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that they have um, strategies for keeping themselves well, like when if they get upset with something that's happened in the household, what can they do? Often it's music, oh. mm. listening to yeah. music. Yeah. That's very uh, common. Okay, because it's very common, do you find that there's a particular uh, type of music or genre that people listen to to keep them calm? No, I think that's very personal. Everyone... Mm has their own music that that speaks to them yeah 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 okay. i haven't i haven't found that okay. to be honest we haven't had many uh rangatahi okay to work with um it just hasn't come up or all many all many um young children we've just started working with some young children and mostly we just start with play and just start with establishing a relationship yeah mm -hmm. just that's the key all of it, all the support, the relationship is the key thing. Yeah. Can't really help anyone until you have a good relationship going on. Yeah. I I don't talk all that for yeah. Karo. Absolutely. I listened to Ta Mason Jury, mm. um, his score or on uh, relationships. It was mm. really quite funny because you're saying about the clinical side of things where they expect you to have uh, one session and you got it all assessed. Mm -hmm. And he says, it might take me six or seven sessions. Yeah. He said, because at the, the beginning, the most important thing to him was to build a relationship yeah. uh, with the tongue of the fire or the whānau. Yeah. yeah, that's the same for us. It's yeah, all yeah. about the relationship. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. So what about, uh, is you do the same, I suppose, for um, teenagers mm. um, in your second game, build that relationship? Yeah. Any strategies a little bit different uh, for them? Mm. I, I follow their lead. I have worked with some teenagers in different schools, mm. and basically, I'm finding it's it's still it's still the same kind of thing of listening. Mm. And once they trust you, it's just having someone else that they can talk to, and and that is what helps them. Mm. So I don't really have to give any advice or or do anything special. Just listen and be a safe person that they can talk to mm -hmm. i do let them know if they tell me something <laughs> that's like maybe against the law or <laughs> you know i might have to dob them in but uh, haven't haven't been put in that position yet so that's good <laughs> okay i'm going to come back to that um, active listening since you just brought it up then um because i asked before about how would i know as the person you have a good conversation with um that you're actively listening to me right mm. and you told me some strategies that you use um but then from the other side of the coin how do i know if i'm the one listening that i am actually listening because i can say i'm actively listening but how do i know that i am Mm. Well, this is where um, I guess as a as a good support person, you're self-reflecting kind of all the time Good. on how you 
how you are with people. Um, so you, you've got to be checking in. So you might, OK, become aware that you're drifted off and not really paying attention. Um, yeah, you've got to pull yourself back. The other person might not realise, but um, most people do. It's, it's often mm -hmm. a very intuitive thing. You would know if I wasn't paying no attention to you pretty quickly. Yeah, then I'd just turn off yeah. and just let you gabble. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah so uh, the other way around is, is really interesting. So that, you know, so you're talking about self-awareness, mm. reflecting on what they're saying, constantly going over your mind what they're talking about so your mind doesn't get distracted. Yes. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Well, not it will just, and just checking in with yourself that you know, mm. yeah, you're not thinking about something else while they're talking. Yeah, mm. yeah. I might not. I might not be dwelling exactly on what they're saying, but I want to. I'm making sure that I am listening. So I, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Mm. <laughs> it's quite interesting, Ian, because in our line of work, it's um, we're quite. Um, um, I guess uh, looking at a plan or, or, you know, sometimes during the, when you're closing that conversation with someone, you're thinking about what you're going to pick up on next or mm. um, when should we meet again or yes. all those sorts of things. And I think, um, you know, if you've made a really good connection when you see them in a better space, you mm. know, like they're, they're leaving with a smile or um, you can see that they've, you know, they've, they feel like they've unpacked or yes. they've got, um, yeah, they've got some acknowledgement. That is a big thing, wasn't it? Acknowledging that people, you know, you may not feel, um, you know, because you're not in their situation, but if you acknowledge um, what they're trying to tell you is, is okay to feel like that and this is how we're going to work on it. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's an interesting process actually. Sometimes... Mm. You know, it's not till about the second or third time you meet someone that you actually feel like you, you're sort of really working well with them or mm. making them feel a bit more proactive or mm. a bit more supported. Uh -huh. And yeah. I guess um, in the work that you do, um, there's been a lot of tangata whaiora or their families who sometimes feel, oh, just another, another agency. Mm. Because, mm. yeah... And then again, it's about developing that relationship, yes. and then so that they know, hey, actually, these fellas, they're different. Mm. And they are listening to me. Mm. Yeah. Then the healing can start mm. taking place. Yeah. And that might take a little time mm. to develop. But what is time? If we take it into um, the perception of uh, Kronos and Kairos, you know, Kronos being the chronological time, I've only got this amount. Where Kairos means I've got the cosmos mm. until you're better, not until six weeks. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Yeah. yeah, we don't work to a particular time frame. Time frame. <coughs> mm. No, it's what what the person needs. Mm. That is awesome. Mm. That's awesome. You are. Uh, you talked about Edith having yes. uh, Hapu Mama. Aye. And then some of the pro other programs with um, suicide and all that mm -hmm. kind of thing. Yes. Uh, what about other workers that you have in your organisation? Yes, Serena. Um, Serena? She is a housing manager for transitional houses. You have transitional houses? We have transitional houses. How many houses do you have? A hundred? Um, we have uh, six family homes and three units for singles or couples. Wow. Mm. But they are, um, they come through, social housing comes through MSD, so that okay. the, that's where the referrals come from. So people do quite often turn up on the door saying they need a house, and we just unfortunately have to redirect mm. them to um, MSD, MSD because, yeah, they need to be on the social housing register, and that's who puts them on the social housing register. Okay. Yeah, and, and uh. then they... They, because Emerge have transitional housing as well. There's quite a few organisations with transitional housing or social housing, but it's all run from MSD. Okay. Yeah. So, can you say the numbers of houses that you have again? Um, six family homes and three units for singles, singles. or couples. So nine, nine dwellings. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So, are they solely for clients that you are supporting? No. No, that, so that's kind of, mm. yeah, separate. It comes okay. MSD, whoever, you know. Oh, oh so it's anyone that's on the social housing register? Yes. Wow. But because transitional mm. housing um, is only for three months. Yeah. Which isn't great, but often it 
it gets reviewed um, and it will be extended because you're not going to put someone out on the street because there's a lack of houses. But ultimately the goal is that they go to long-term housing. So there's a, um, so Lil, um, our other colleague, she um, works with the families to help them overcome the barriers that they're facing to get into long term. So she, that's her role is to help them okay. get long term. So that's quite similar to Emerge Aotearoa as yeah. well. Yeah. Do you work close, or does she work closely with them as well? Or? I mean, not. No, not yet. I think it would probably be quite useful too because it's um, they have housing navigators, which mm. is what the same role. Yes, yeah. So um, it could be useful for her to, mm. um, yeah, know some of the housing navigators and how they work. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a yeah, this is a new role for her. She's a natural, but it's a new role for her. Mm. Mm. Yeah. All right. So you have Edith. Serena? Serena. Lil? Lil. As, does Lil only do housing, or do the Serena and Lil only do housing? Um, Serena only does housing, okay. so she manages all the house, houses, and Lil does um, part two, two roles, part-time housing, working with the whanau, and also she does uh, part-time family whanau support work. Oh, so similar to you? Yes. <coughs> okay. Yeah. And we also have Marlene. Well, what does Marlene do? She's the regional manager. She's the regional manager? Regional manager, but there's only one branch so far. <laughs> <laughs> so she's our manager. Okay, all right, all right. So she hasn't been in the role very long, has she? No, since January this year. Well, wow. okay, so in your team, you have how many, six people six. in your team? Yes, and it's a great team. Mm. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, well, the work that you do is um, vitally important um, to the people out in our rohe, absolutely, um, because if they didn't have any support, you know, the outcomes more than likely, more than not, will be different mm. than what they are. So you, you know, you're doing a great job. If there was one thing you could change in terms of, um, or anything you can talk, whatever, what would that one thing be for each of you? Well, in what context? In terms, well, you can, is it funding that you need? Do you need more support? If there's one thing that you could, to help the community, what would that be? Oh, I've got one thing in mind. Yeah. If everybody could listen as well as we do, we wouldn't have a job. Cool, so, uh, <laughs> so are you saying you're going to run programs to teach people how to actively Maybe, listen? Maybe, because um, I think, you know, that's, that's one of the, listening without, judging although I don't know like you bring up I don't know how you prove that you're not mm. judging them because there's natural judging going on yeah. in some way mm. but so a person feels like they're being listened to without being judged um, if, if, if more people could do that with each other we would have less of a job I mean that's always my goal to work myself out of Redundance. a job yeah mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. <laughs> you know I think that's a good program to run yeah, um, because it is. I think it is because yeah. at the end of the day, um, I'll use this example shortly. If a people can actively listen, okay, or if they know the skill, because it is a skill, mm. yeah, if they have the skill to actively listen, things will be different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. changes like, relationships. I, I was just thinking though. Mm. I don't do it with my partner. I never hear anything he says, and he never hears anything I say. Mm. So I should well, practice it at home okay. first. <laughs> yeah. so I just had this thought in my mind, like if I said to you right now, okay, if I said to you, dog, tell me what dog you're thinking about right now. Okay, so let's do this. Susie? Mac? Steffi? Oh, Steffi. Oh, a little... Uh, 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 Finra, just my neighbour's dog. Okay, cool. What about you, Warren? <laughs> <laughs> the annoying dog down the road that keeps barking when you walk past. <laughs> I don't know. I need to be a foxy. A foxy, okay. Now listen to this. So the dog that I'm thinking about, okay, stands, oh, it's usually used as a guide dog. They're normally, um, tan in colour or black or chocolate okay they can be used sometimes and they usually this is what they breed for as uh, hunting dogs okay 
They're really cuddly. What dog am I talking about? Labrador. I was going to say Labrador, but yep. are they used for hunting? Yeah, they got nice soft eat, mouths. They would eat the kai, though. They got nice soft mouths, <laughs> so they can retrieve. Mm. So, even though in the start of the conversation I said dog, you all had a different dog. Mm. And so, if I was communicating like that, you'd all have different pictures. Yeah. And I'll be talking past you because you're thinking about something different. But as as I start going along. And just describing the dog fully, mm. then you, we came back to the same picture. Therefore, I could start talking on the, the same or even keel because we knew where we were on the same page. And if we were being clever, we would have asked you. Mm. He didn't yeah. give us the opportunity. Though. Yeah, normally I don't. <laughs> yeah. But you can clarify. <laughs> Are you talking yeah. About? yeah, you can start clarifying things. Mm. And so, again, it's about communication mm. actively listening Aye. yeah so that's just what i thought of mm. anyway warren what would be the one thing he, you would change or you'd like to see uh, more resources in the yeah what do you mean by more resources um, i think there are still a lot of people out there that fall through the gaps Mm -hmm. don't actually have the right, you know, fit to, like, uh, there's not enough services out there to, to fit what they actually need. So, mm -hmm. so um, like, I, I guess, like, for mental health, I mean, there are some people that just don't fit the, you know, the right criteria to be able to go to um, a, a mental health service. But there's certainly something there, and they do need support. So where do they go to get mm. that support? Mm. Mm. That's true. Um, Is it around funding or not having enough people in the role? I know they used to have community mental health, and you could just go drop in whenever you felt like you needed to play a game or have a chat without actually, you know, going through any process. Yeah, more services like yeah, that. I would think would be great. Yeah. Mm. Okay. So, Mr. Butterick, since you uh, have just, <laughs> you've heard two people from who work with mental health in our community and some of the things that they would like to see. So, just a challenge for you, just throwing it out there. Uh, <laughs> being a bit cheeky, but hey, <laughs> um, they work on, in the call, on the call face. And so they know what they're talking about. So... Just a little plug for them, Mr. Butterick, <laughs> a, new, a new MP for Wadadapa. Anyway, we're just going to take a, a sidestep. Oh, can I just ask a question? Yeah, 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 that's <clears> what I was going to you. One day when I visited recently, which was probably in the last couple of months, there was lots of kai in your main entrance area. Mm -hmm. Do you do um, support people with... with we do. We, um, um, we um, get Y waste weekly and oh, cool. box it up for families that we know... Um, who are struggling. Mm. So yeah, every every Wednesday we collect Y waste and then deliver it out to people we know and need. Mm. It's amazing, it's, it's, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. that's it's a fun mm. fun yeah. part. Yeah, because yeah, even um, you know uh, lunches in schools um, is great for families too, isn't it? Because mm. it's um, supplying. You know, Trust House and... run those. Hey, yeah. yeah, the lunches in schools. Yeah. Hopefully they'll continue under the new uh, regime. 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 I, th I, think yeah. they, I think they were, but you know. mm. can only wait and see. Yep. <laughs> can only wait and it might see. Might take three years to get motivated. Maybe. All right. So just to let you know, in terms of um, our trip this week for Age Concern, it's to Palmerston North. I think shopping there. Yeah, I think we're we're at full capacity um, from Friday or Thursday when I we counted the numbers. Shopping in Palmerston North for Christmas. Yep. Lots of people like to go over there. I like to keep away from too many <laughs> busy areas when you're shopping. Eh? And, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it's good to get over and get out of town, I guess. Okay. So before we um, finish our, our time here on uh, Arrow FM 92.7, Aging with Attitude, thank you very much for being a guest on our show today. Yes, it was good. really enjoyable. I enjoyed the conversation. Um, but tell me again, if I wanted to refer someone, of, you know, if 
a whānau member because they needed support in terms of the family needing support. Again, where would I go to? 323 Queen Street. 323 three Queen Street. Or you could look up on a Yellow Brick Road on Auntie Google. Yes. <laughs> Masterton, Yellow Brick Road, Masterton. Yeah, look up there because um, I know there's a Yellow Brick Road that delivers fish. <laughs> yeah, there is. Yeah. Yeah. Do yeah. you use them? Yeah, I do. I do. Because <laughs> you just um, ring online, uh, place order, and go straight to the boat, yeah. and they ship it from the boat straight to your home. Mm. Mm. So, but Lucky. yep, Yellow Brick Road, Masterton, and you'll find the. Um, the referral forms there, should you need it. And also, have a look also at the video around Avaka Puahuaho. That'll be really awesome too. You've got a brochure? Yeah, and I, yeah, I probably should. Telephone number? Uh, oh, it's just got a Central North Island 0800 number, but that could be handy. Yep, that's okay. anything's handy for access. And the 0800 number is? Yep, 0800 555. Four three four. That will that will get you to us as well. Mm. So that's oh eight hundred five 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 four three four. Yes. Great. And does it have a website address there? Yeah, yellowbrickroad.org.nz. But then you do need to put in Wairarapa, I think, to get our particular mm. page. Okay. So, Vana, thank you so much, um, Tan and Warren, for coming in and, as I said, joining us uh, today and telling us about your service. Um, really interesting really helpful for our community and also the services other services that your organization offer as well particularly interested in the hapu mama one um, and the suicide waves yeah, waves suicide yeah yeah program yeah yeah that that's can only be helpful knowing that our region has a history of um, suicide mm. for not only rangatahi but also pakeke as well so anyway, Fano, um, Susie, do you want a last word? A last word. Yep. Um, roll on Friday. <laughs> it's a long weekend. We get a Monday off next week. Um, yeah, just everyone keep safe. Um, Christmas is coming up, so don't get too pressured by that either. Um, yep. Yeah. And remembering that um, Labor Weekend, traditionally in the Wadadapa, uh, for Maramataka, is when we start planting our, our veggie gardens. Tomatoes. No more frost, maybe, do you think? <laughs> Let's just cross our fingers, but yeah. Have a great week uh, and a great month, and we'll see you on 92.7, Aging with Attitude, in November. Hey, Cornita.